Okay, so what am I going to attempt today? First, have this. Uh, what I'm going to attempt is to fix a problem that I created. I have this ADSB receiver from FlightAware, and I'll let you Google what that is. Maybe I'll, I'll put it in the descriptions. How that? Basically, you can track. Uh, aircraft flying nearby uh, as long as they're using a system called ADSB with something like this uh, so my screw up is that in the process of transporting it I forgot to detach the antenna and BAM the uh, antenna connector broke off the PCB and I'm lucky that all that happened was the solder broke off if it had been the PCB breaking, I would this would, I would be out of luck. This is not a very expensive part. It's only 19 bucks, but still, it's kind of a pain to lose 19 bucks. So what I want to try to do today is I'm going to try to reflow this um, I'm going to try to reflow this connector because right now, obviously, it doesn't connect very well. Uh, actually, if I set up the the receiver in a vertical position where the antenna pressure and weight is resting on here it makes just enough of a connection that I'm getting about half of the aircraft in the area but I replaced this I already replaced this module with another one and the reason I know it's half is because I, if I measure them side by side um, you know I end up with double the number with the new device and they're the same exact thing so first things first I'll uh, show what my testing methodology will be for did I screw this up or not. So I have my trusty uh, multimeter here set in continuity mode. I don't know if you can hear that. Hopefully you can hear that over the microphone I'm using. I'm using my laptop's mic so it's not very great. Um, and I'm going to confirm the contacts on this PCB make sure that obviously right now nothing is shorted so when I am done I need to make sure that nothing is still shorted otherwise I'm this uh, will have failed so the center stud of the connector is here and I can see based on the PCB layout that it connects directly to these two points I'm going to connect to the easiest one that should get a tone and I'll test against the ground. This chip is grounded. This is the other connector on the antenna, which is also grounded. I'm going to do that beep because I crossed these uh, two connectors together. There's nothing there. Nothing there. So we have a positive connection there. Great. The other one is that I need to make sure that this, ground, this connector is, in fact, grounded. So I'll go from this connector to the chip. And it is grounded. And I'll go to the... Uh, new ground side of this uh, transistor that we have here. So I know that the circuit is complete there, right? Both of these terminate to ground. All right. So when I get done, this the same should be the true or the truth. If I connect these two specifically, there should not be a bell. Or if I connect these two, there shouldn't be any any alarming. If there is, then I've screwed up. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and position the broken connector back where it belongs. I've had my uh, fishing here. There we go. Damn it. There we go. It's as close as we're going to get because I need to have a little room to work with. Um, let me change the way this light is set up here. Maybe, maybe better. What I should have done was gotten my headlamp. But shoulda, coulda, woulda. And it's not going to focus, is it? 
So I'm going to get it to focus on this and then come back to it. All right. Well, not great, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to do. I have my old trusty soldering iron heated up and ready. Don't judge me. This is an old beat up soldering iron and it's already heated to hell and back. And what I'm going to try to do is simply reflow this connector. By reflowing, I mean I'm going to try to take the existing solder that's there and uh, make it work for what we need it to work. I have some extra solder here just in case. This is uh, lead free, what? 500 thou? No, 50 thou. Um, that's a 1.27 millimeter for you folks not in the USA um, in case I need it but my hope is to simply heat up this part um, and reflow the ground connectors first without melting the internals doing this left handed very hard. Without, anyhow, without heating up the internal so much, that we end up with uh, a molten connector, or heating up the PCB so much that I end up frying the PCB components. So, don't ask me how hot this thing is. It's I don't have temperature control on it. It's whatever heat I can get out of a. I want to say this is a 40 watt. Yeah, it's a 40 watt um, soldering iron. Yes, I know. Like watching paint dry, I think. Get enough there. And find out. Well, I don't think I'm going to get it to reflow, so I'm just going to do the, the wrong thing. I'm just going to heat up the, con the connector here, the conductor, and just touch off a bit of uh, solder to get it to flow in, make a positive connection there, yes I know I touched the iron and not the solder, I know the connector there, but sometimes you gotta piss with the clock you got, okay, Oh, I might have reflowed that one. Yeah, it looks like I reflowed that one. Hey, even a squirrel, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while, right? So I'm going to flip this over. The flip side, oh, look at that. The flip side already reflowed on one post. Let's see if we can get, get it to reflow on the other post. Maybe all the heat from the front was just leaching out to the back. So there we go. Everything is reconnected. Now I'm going to test and see if I to make sure that I didn't short this out. Put this uh, a little closer to my laptop. Hopefully you can hear the bell there. Testing to make sure that I have kind of con continuity between the leads. And now we're going to do the first test, which is ground to center. Nothing. That's good. And then we're going to do ground to ground. Come here. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. 
Not a very good connection, but it's there. Oh, there we go. Let me connect the shell. There we go. Perfect. I'm testing the shell, which is where I really should be testing. I'm getting continuity. Nothing in the center. Now let's test the center. So we're supposed to go. Actually, let's see. Can I get to that connector from the center? I can. All right. So it looks like this has worked out again. Uh, I got lucky. Not going to deny it. The uh, next thing I'm going to do, and it's not going to be on this video, probably not on any video, is I'm going to epoxy that with uh, some 5-minute epoxy or something like that to make sure that that doesn't break off again. I'm going to get support on the back side of this, and on the front and on the back side, so that any more flex on this connector doesn't break it off again. Uh, in the future, I'll just be smarter and not forget to take the damn antenna off. Uh, but in the short term, at least, uh, I have another device I can use for ADSB. And let's see, go back over here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Finding where the camera's at becomes a, a challenge every once in a while. Not the prettiest repair, not the most amazing repair because I'm, I'm just an amateur, but it does the job. Have a good one.